I want to encourage you guys who are not suffering from such a level of cognitive dissonance that you're incapable of entertaining the idea of testing your own beliefs to go out there and start doing simple tests that should illustrate from a terrestrial observational level whether or not we're on a ball. And what I've been suggesting is, you know, something I'm trying to think of things that Joe Blow can do. You know, a high powered laser, probably most of us can't do, you know, because it's going to be expensive, you know, for some of us. Although there is this uh, YouTube guy out there, he goes by the name of Jernism, who uh, got himself a laser and he's been doing some pretty cool tests so far. Check this out. The original experiment was from Monterey or Pacific Grove, California, from Lover's Point. And we were attempting to shoot a 1,000 milliwatt laser across the four-mile stretch to Sand City, California, and a little place called Message Hill. We had tested the laser a few days before just to make sure that it shot across that distance, and it looked like it was absolutely no problem. We saw it reflecting from the, the hill, which is uh, behind the, the shore there. So we'd had no issues with the length that the laser would go. And it was definitely bright enough in the night sky. Uh, you can see the laser here on the screen is uh, incredibly powerful. Uh, I was able to light a match with it and go straight through electrical tape. And there you can see a little diagram from Google Earth of exactly where we were shooting. And the total distance was a little bit over 4 miles. It was about 4.07 I believe. So we had got there the night of the test and as I said fog was thick so we had to wait a little bit and make sure that we got to nightfall before we tried the test. When we got around to testing we had somebody waiting on the receiving side and they had their video camera ready in order to show where the beam hit the shore. The hypothesis or the result we were looking for was we figured since we were shooting at one foot above sea level from the Pacific Grove side that it would be impossible for that beam to hit anything below 10 feet on the opposite hill. Unfortunately one thing that we weren't able to test on test night was when the beam hit the other side, it was reported that it was about 10 feet in diameter. So the beam obviously grew uh, quite large, was something we couldn't see on test day. And so that nullified the results, and we were all upset. And we're trying to think of ways as we sat there on the beach, how could we get this laser to go across and not lose its beam? Was there anything else that we had learned from the experiment that would tell us that we could get a definitive answer one way or the other? Now you can see on the screen from the zoomed in video camera what that beam looked like across the four mile ocean. And from this view you can actually see that that beam is quite large. It was so large in fact it, wouldn't, it wasn't even able to be videotaped or photographed. With such a large diameter beam it was really starting to look like the only possible way would be for us to get a new laser with a more focused beam. Uh, nothing else seemed like it was going to work until it hit me that if I had gone to the other side... I mean it's not just convincing me because I, I'm convinced but I mean for as far as video evidence I'm wondering if the camera would be able to see the green light, especially like what you just said on the rock. Yeah. If I come in on this side of the rock and shoot the rock mm -hmm. and just make circles with the laser on the rock, if the camera saw that from across the water, if the camera's at water level. Yeah. So personally, I thought that the fat guy had a great idea. So I went ahead and went with it. You can see on the left side of the screen we did away with the idea of shooting the laser across the water and went with the idea on the right side which was to have the camera zoom in and try to see the laser. This way we could be right at the seashore and we thought this was a better idea.
So then came the next night and we planned on doing the retest. This time we had the cameraman stay in the same position at the Pacific Grove uh, Lover's Point side and we went to the Sand City Message Hill shore side. Uh, we took with us the laser and a poster board so that we could stand that upright and we marked on the poster board different heights from 6 inches, 12 inches, 18 inches, uh, all the way up to 2.5 feet. Tell me when you see the green light. Tell us, he's going to tell us when he sees the light. Now go a little lower. I'm going to see if he sees it How below 6. How about there? How about there? <laughs> How about there? That's where he lost it. Right there he lost it? Here you see it. So probably waves are getting this way there. You see it right here. <laughs> but, uh, he sees it. At, here? He sees it lower than six inches. How about here? Way lower. Here. An inch. Okay. He loses it about an inch. About an inch is where he loses it. Okay. Wow. I know. I mean, here he's got a laser reflection four miles away, and the camera's picking it up on the other side. I'm, you know, that's just not possible. According to spherical geometry, you're not supposed to be able to see things like that. So, I mean, God bless them for being out there doing what they're doing with the with the lasers. Um, you know, if you guys got the ability to go out and get a laser and do something like that, then I encourage you to do it. But I've been trying to figure ways that, you know, Joe Blow, who doesn't have a lot of money, can uh, go out and do tests for himself. And, you know, most of us have cell phones that have, uh, you know, smart cell phones, smartphones, whatever, that have cameras built into them. And you can go to Academy Sports or someplace like that and buy a telescope for 30 bucks. Okay, so you're know, not talking like a ton of money here. 30 to 50 bucks, you can get, you know, a decent telescope or even maybe a pair of binoculars or something. And you could go to Home Depot for, you know, 10 bucks or whatever and buy a four by eight sheet of plywood and some paint. And what I'm saying is, look, go out there and um, uh, use a four by eight sheet of plywood and paint uh, really brightly colored bands for each foot of the plywood. And then... You could go to, let's say, three miles. That should be a decent enough uh, distance you should be able to pick up with the uh, telescope. Now, at that distance, three miles away, the difference between the ground you're standing on and that of the other side is six feet. So if you set a sheet of plywood on its side, so it's eight feet wide and four feet high, and you've got four brightly colored bands, one foot each, different colors of paint, and you go three miles away, then the top of that four by eight sheet of plywood, if it's laying on its side, eight feet long, four feet high, should be two feet below your ability to see it, according to spherical geometry. Now, this is the this, this spherical geometry I'm talking about is it, it's not from flat earthers. These are globalists that, give, that gave this number to me. Now, I've got people writing me and telling me that this, this math is incorrect. And if it is, let me know, because uh, I, I want to know what the truth is. But... I had the majority of people that I asked, is this math correct? The majority of globalists, these are people who believe in the globe, confirm, including uh, professors at a, a college in California, uh, a math professor at a college in California, confirmed to me that this math is correct. And the spherical geometry pointing to uh, eight inch per mile, but it's, you know, spherical geometry. So the next, it's not like a slant. So mile two is not 16 inches. It's 32 inches. Mile three is six feet. Four miles is 10 feet. Five miles is 16 feet. So since we know the math, you can start, you know, depending on the strength of your binoculars or cameras, your zoom lens or your telescope, you know, go out a little bit further this time. Let's try, you know, five miles. At a distance of five miles, the difference is 16 feet. And, you know, each mile, you know, you can probably download an app or whatever to check the altimeter to make sure that the, it's level. You know, especially if you're out someplace like uh, the salt plains of uh, the salt flats or whatever, Utah or someplace, or out in the desert somewhere where there's a nice straight road. And every mile, just check, check to see what the altitude is. And if it's, you know, reasonably flat or very flat, then you know you've got a good place. Or do it on a reservoir. You know the water's going to be flat. 
So, you know, set up the board on a, at the end of a beach and go on the other side and look across. If you can see it, then we're proving something here with empirical evidence. Five miles, you know, the math is telling you that the top of that four by eight sheet of plywood laid on its side should be 12 feet below your ability to see it. I mean, if you can, then especially across water, then we're not on a globe. So these are simple tests that anybody can do. We don't have to rely on NASA. We don't have to rely on the government or the military uh, to tell us what's going on.